All right, so I'm doing this video a little bit after the fact here, um, but I couldn't find a lot of good information online, so I figured I'd make this um, real quick. So we bought this camper, it's a 2011. We bought it in 2018 and uh, tried to turn the radio power on and it wouldn't power on. So this is a, a Concert Tone ZX75, um, another trailer that was the same that we looked at. Uh, he said that his broke after a year and he never got it replaced. So looking around online, lots of people have problems with concert tone radios. Um, they make an updated version called like the GT2 or a GT3. Um, was worried about that. It was a few hundred dollars. So after looking around, a lot of people uh, try to use a number of different things. So there's some Jensen ones that work. There's a IRV brand that makes some. And there's people that just put in regular... Um, car audio deck so the problem with this one is that it's the DVD player for the system so not that you can't get a different DVD player but um, since the head unit is all wired into the speakers you can run the DVD and then this right here is the video out and then you just on ours you just set a TV here on newer ones there's this whole thing is built out with the TV but anyways uh, so in this kind of model year era where you have a concert tone uh, what I ended up doing was um, getting an IRV 6500 BT so that's this guy right here uh, has Bluetooth it's got the same feature set as the other one so three speaker areas DVD player um, and the addition of Bluetooth is nice so you can play from your phone uh, so what I did was the first thing that you do is these little side covers here come off uh, you just depress these with a little flathead so you can see right here they have a little clip, um, the two clips, top and bottom, just get depressed. There's one depressed there. Sorry, filming this myself. Then another one, and then this piece just slides straight off. Another one on the other side. Behind there, there's two screw holes. There's actually three screw holes on each side, but mine just have two screws in. So. You can see kind of what I did here. Um, so this isn't exactly how it looked. It was more like this, if you can see. Um, kind of took up the whole space. I'm gonna take this out now. There's some basic connection stuff on the back, just like you normally see the video out, antenna and the power and speaker cables. Um, so normally what was in ours was this filler piece was right here, if you can see. So the four screw holes were what were used. Um, this filler piece just has some Craig jig things in it. So there's two screws going up and two screws going down. Um, like typical RV building, there's no good fit and finish here. They're totally different, whatever. You just gotta stick the screwdriver up from behind. So it was kind of in here without this filler piece that I made. So it was in here, you go up kind of at an angle like this and then down the same way get those four screws out and this just slides right out there was no other nails or glue or anything holding it so i took that out and basically just cut a piece of wood the same width um, i wanted to keep that just in case so that'll just stay in here so this i just cut down it's about uh maybe a half to three quarters of an inch but um, what i did was cut it a little big and then just kind of filed down where the edge of the stereo was so that it was a little bit snugger so it's the same same size i put two nails in here to hold it in so it's nice and tight and then the only other thing you have to do is um, take the wiring harness which this looks like a huge mess but for anyone familiar with any sort of radio wiring it's it's fairly straightforward so there's power and ground so in this one um, you have to do yellow and red to power because one is like a key ignition which obviously the trailer doesn't have the other one is constant power to keep the clock and memory lit and all that stuff and then here's ground so those two were spliced in here i went the easy route just kind of strung them together and used heat shrink tape uh, and then there's a total of four speakers in this trailer um, they're both radios have the capability of having three two speaker sections plus a subwoofer this trailer is a 21 ssl it's pretty small there's two speakers inside, one on each uh, channel, and then two speakers outside on channel C. 
So basically I did the same exact thing, cut the previous harness. So here's the previous harness, still kind of intact for the concert tone, just clipped them off and then wired these guys in to the new harness. So this is the harness for the IRV. It's pretty straightforward. They're actually all labeled, which is nice. So you can just take C left and right, front, rear, whatever, B left and right, rear. And then uh, it's also got a, a diagram on the radio itself, which makes it nice in case the labels come off. So you've got all your wiring connections here. And then the other thing that I had to do because this this radio is deeper is I pulled the there was the yellow RCA cable. Sorry, I keep going over for the video. So this video line connects to this guy right here. It's just a single line. It was this cable here. So you can see how this plug is much deeper. And so when I tried to shove the radio in, it would just hit and wouldn't fit in all the way. Um, I also kind of scraped, these screw holes are right on the edge of what will show. So I scraped all the extra off and put a little bit of um, color pen on there to match the wood as best I can. So I swapped this out. The, the red and white are not used for the audio. It's just video out from the head unit to here to plug into the TV. So, but this one fits behind and doesn't run into the wall. So you don't have to cut into the wall or anything like that. And then you've got your normal antenna cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. I don't know if I'll be able to do this very well without losing. So we've got all of our wiring ready to go. I'm gonna set this down. Normally I wouldn't put it on the face, but plug in this harness. We're gonna plug in our antenna. And then we're gonna plug in our video. Both of these are video out. There is a line in right here for bringing in another audio signal, but there's some inputs in the front as well. So there's a video out for the TV. And then what we're gonna do is just feed all of this wiring to the back into the hole. It's a little difficult one-handed. I'm gonna set this down for just a second. Make sure you try to push the wiring down as far as you can get in the empty space so that there's nothing to get in the way of anything behind it. So you see I've got the wiring shoved in there now. So this is going to fit almost perfectly in here. From top to bottom this radio is smaller so there are some gaps that if it's not in there almost perfectly they're gonna show up. So you can see right here, there's kind of a gap at the top. But if I raise this too much, you can see that there's a gap at the bottom right underneath. So push this in and get it nearly perfect on that line, top and bottom. You can see there's a gap there, so I'm gonna let it sink down a little bit still good up here but almost showing then you can see here that the previous screw holes you can barely even see are kind of showing on the edge I'm gonna have to put two screws in here and then these two screws are gonna hit that little filler piece that's unfinished that I put in here so afterwards that's what it's gonna look like just far out shot it looks good seems to match everything pretty well. Power it on. So here's some inputs here. There's an SD card, you've got Bluetooth, a USB, a headphone jack. Um, we do mode. Turn the FM on. You can hear. So C ended up being the outside speakers. You can hear that a little bit. I'll turn those off. A is one speaker inside, B is the other one. 
Everything seems to be working. Got presets. Have modes. So you see USB, iPod in, Bluetooth, no connection. Setting up Bluetooth is pretty easy. Aux in, AV in would be in the back. And then you've got your back to FM radio. So that's pretty much it. Everything's hooked up. We can say goodbye to this old guy that never even worked um, and have an easy conversion. Uh, all of these radios kind of get mixed reviews, so I don't think there's any perfect answer for what to replace a concert tone with. Um, but so far in the first day, this one's been pretty good feature-wise, so we hope it lasts.